Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and I am so excited that you're here to catch the weekly replay of my laid-back yet very inspiring conversations with other full-time professional artists. The purpose of this series is to show aspiring artists that it is completely possible to have a great career in the arts. And if you ever want to tune in and have your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just check out the schedule over at facebook.com slash groups slash Artist Academy every Tuesday to catch us on live. I'll see you there. This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time six-figure art business. With weekly trainings that include step-by-step proven art business techniques, plus painting tutorials from yours truly (laughs) and other guest artists who are masters in their field, you will be well-equipped to learn and grow into the highly skilled and highly profitable artist you know you're meant to be. I've figured out what it takes to build my own six-figure art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. It's not hard, but it does require your time and dedication. So if you're up for the challenge, go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. This week's episode features Brooklyn-based muralist and sculptor Jenna Morello. I just got off this interview with her, and I just want to warn you that there is a little bit of language in this episode. Nothing too crazy, but if you have kids around, then maybe just stick to headphones. But language aside... Jenna is so cool. (laughs) I felt myself becoming my own version of a little Brooklyn badass the longer we spoke, which is just laughable (laughs) if you know me, but we reference a lot of her sculptures and murals in this episode. So if you want a visual of exactly what we're talking about, then just click the link in the notes that will take you directly to her Instagram so you can see these wicked cool resin pours yourself. It's such a cool approach. She has roses and epoxy, and it's kind of hard to explain, but you'll totally get it once you see her photos. It's such a unique approach. She's really found this style that is all her own, and this episode is a look into how to stick to your niche, like Jenna, (laughs) how to embrace the suck in the beginning and just say yes to everything in order to build a portfolio, and on the flip side of how it will eventually pay off. Jenna is a great example of that, and she gives such a tough love approach when it comes to giving advice to artists, and I am completely here for it. I think everybody needs to hear a little bit of tough love in their life. I was raised on that, my mother, and so I just, I see the benefits of it so much, and which is why I think that Jenna is such a breath of fresh air in this approach. It really is just nice to hear someone speak her mind unapologetically and give some really good advice from a perspective of someone who's been there, done that. (laughs) So let me know what you think of this week's episode with Jenna Morello. So if you could just start out by kind of telling everybody a little bit about who you are and where you're from and what you do. This is my first official live, actually. Um, <laughs> I am Jenna Morello. I am a artist out of Brooklyn. I would say street artist, but now I'm inside doing all uh, inside stuff. And I just work and live out of Brooklyn. That's awesome. So how did you get into the art world? Did you take the college route? Did you just start painting one day? Like, how did, how did that happen? Um, yeah, so I mean, I've always been creative. I come from a creative family. My father's a graphic artist. My mother's a teacher. So it was always encouraged to be explored. But it was just one of those things from the start that I was drawn to. And then I just jumped around in mediums. I just always kind of like to make things. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of people can resonate with that whole, like, like to make things. I like to make everything. Cakes, um, like craft projects, like literally anything. I, I My first thing is just wanting to make it. And you've, yeah. you've settled on this really interesting niche can you talk about what you're currently working on right now because it's you do some murals but then you do a lot of sculpture resin what it what is it exactly i love it i 
I jump around because I live in Brooklyn. So half the year by me, it's really cold. Yeah. So I'm used to like, you have to work inside because you can travel in the summer, but if in the winter, you kind of got to hunker down and work inside. Um, and I like to do different, a bunch of different mediums. So with my space, my studio is not huge. I, you know, kind of like to make smaller things. And that's just kind of what snowballed into what I'm currently doing because of the whole pandemic, my winter just kind of got extended. Because in the winter, I'll, I'll make things all winter. Then as soon as it gets warm again, I'll begin to travel and go do murals. But now with this, it's kind of just like my winter carrying on. So that's where this kind of evolved into making little things. And I wanted to make them smaller just because getting supplies right now is a headache. Like Amazon's kind of a mess. I can't go to the art supply store. So I wanted to focus on making something small and then that, that had a good price point for people if they wanted to buy it. So that's what brought me to what I am currently at. Very cool. So is it resin that you're working with? What is that? Yeah, a lot of what I work with is resin. The small sculptures and stuff like look like here's one of the, the little lighters like these are. So, yeah, this is this is a resin, which is it's basically just liquid plastic. Um, yeah, it's a it's a two part thing that you mix, but you could do a lot of things with it. So um, it's kind of shifted from what I used to do. I used to just do like resin pour overs and overlays, and then it evolved into actual sculptures and casting and filling them with things. So very cool. I especially when I found you, it wasn't too long ago, but you were really heavy into doing your uh, rose blocks basically like yeah. you would fit can you just describe those a little bit for any of the podcast listeners uh, this will be in podcast later um and just kind of like say how you got to that like how how did you Please. come at that okay. yes oh my gosh so, is... so um it was it was a mistake actually what i was trying to do was i was trying to sit one of these things inside flush and then when I went to go put it in the mold, it got buried and I had to dig it out. And I liked like the, ge the geometry of it. So I just kind of kept going oh with it. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. I mean, they're fun. They're, they're, they're tough because it's, it depends on how they settle. Are they, they real roses? Yeah. Yeah. They're all real roses. They were, yeah, they were fresh and then altered and then put into all this other stuff. Very cool. So you you have the rose, and then you paint the rose, and then you resin around it. Yeah, I have I have the rose, and then I cast that into its own block, and then I bury that into a cement separate mold after it's cured, and then I dig that out. But a lot of what I do, like you don't know if it's coming out. Do you know what I mean? Properly. Like there's so many fails, especially in set in like setting those roses, because think about it. I only have a couple centimeters of space on each side. So cool. That's so cool though. You, even the mess ups are kind of, kind of cool in their own way. How many do you think fail? 50%? In the beginning? <laughs> um, may, maybe every one in four, but here's the thing. My fail and the general public's fail are very different. So I have friends that like would gladly take them, but like it doesn't sit right within myself because I know it's a fail, but that's why my mother has a lot of pieces that were fails, but she doesn't even know the difference or think they're fails. <laughs> so I, I mean, a lot of my stuff, because I'm working with natural elements and because resin's a chemical and it heats up, so you don't know necessarily how it's going to change something. And it might not even change it right away. I could cast something and then say there's a chemical reaction over time. It could turn later on. So I just kind of have to monitor and see like what what the duration of it is over a certain period of time, even before I release it. Like I had a couple of those sitting before I released them just to see what they would look like after two weeks, three weeks. And then once I was confident that they were OK, then I released them. Oh, cool. So I, do you mean uh, do you have problems with like the resin yellowing or what do you mean? Um, No, it's just because they're natural material. Like if you. A lot of my materials, some of them are fresh. So dried flowers are easy. All the moisture is removed out of them. But if I resin something that still has some kind of moisture in it, if it's not deep enough or if it's not coated enough, that moisture will have a perfect example right here. So this, you could say this was fresh. Okay. 
Okay. So you see, then the see that right there. So there was moisture in this, so it split because oh. this is done in layers. See, so there's a little bit of moisture in this, and because of it, it ended up splitting this. Okay, yeah. So, so you, 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 you can see that. Yeah, you, and so you 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 basically had like an epoxy mold, and it and it just split <laughs> like because of the moisture. No, it. this split. No, no, no. It did it after I had I had already resin this. So I resin this and then it was looked fine and then a couple days later what'll happen is then it'll split. So you okay. don't really know. Like resin like concrete I think takes 28 days to fully harden. Resin isn't hardened for at, fully hardened for at least a week or two. Oh wow. Dang, all, all the different things to jump through. The, those, yeah. are, those are things I don't even think about be, being a muralist or a painter. You know, just like how how things scientifically work together in that way kind of a thing. Yeah. I mean, it's not stuff you can Google, but it's definitely <laughs> stuff that over time, you know, I've learned how to do. And they also use different resins. Like I use a slow curing resin. I use a fast curing resin. I can't do those rose blocks with a fast curing resin. They'll get completely buried in bubbles and you won't see them because it heats up too fast so there's different there's different materials for different things that you're trying to do you should teach a class i know i know people <laughs> say that to me yeah for sure there's just i mean i i have no problem with telling people like if they ask me i'm not that artist that isn't willing to share so i have no problem if like friends or other people hit me up and want to know how to do it then i gladly tell them yeah Good. Okay. So, uh, what was your job before being an artist? Like, have you always been an artist or what was the tipping point that took you into this full-time amazing creative career? I mean, I've always, I've always, yeah, I've always done it, but I don't know. I guess when something comes really naturally for you, you kind of think of, of all the other things you're supposed, I, I come from a very teacher oriented family. So like going to college, you know, getting an education was very drilled into my brain by my mother, um, which I wanted to fulfill for her. But I did. I went to a year of college. And when I got there, it was just kind of like, I don't know. I, they taught me how to stretch canvases, but it wasn't, I don't know. It wasn't maybe my brain works a little bit differently. I'm not really sure. Um, so I was a server. I worked at 4040 in Jay-Z's nightclub for a long time. And <laughs> what? Oh my god. Yeah. That's a that's a different story. And then I <laughs> and then I bartended. But I mean nothing, no like serious careers. So I and this and an artist, like full time artist bills has probably been for like the last five years. Yeah. Where I don't have to worry about anything else. That's amazing. That's so cool. So how many hours do you spend creating per day? I I know it must vary, but what's um, I probably, I just was telling some about, but I, I mean, I don't create 24 seven, but I am working. I work throughout the full day just because it's something that I like to do. So there's not really a set time. I mean, I'll get up, I get up pretty early. My dogs get up really early. So I've been getting up like six thirty seven. And what I do is I will cast stuff the night before, and then I'll wake up in the morning and I'll pull whatever. If I resin, whatever, I put stuff in the mold and then I will, set stuff up like if i have to set whatever up for the day or if i'm working on commissions i will go run my dogs i will go work out i will come back and then for the rest of the day i will work on and off i'll take a break to run them at night feed them and then i come back and i'll cast stuff in the evenings well this is my schedule right now like while we're in all this and then i will cast up in the evenings and see how it looks in the morning so i mean it's a constant yeah it's a it's an all day kind of thing that's amazing. So how do you find buyers? I think that that's one of the, the biggest questions a lot of people who are trying to come into the art world, you know, face. They're like, how do you how do I find people to buy my art? Because I have no idea how to get, find people to buy sculptures. Is it the same as paintings and murals? Like, would you have, to have a different angle? I don't know. I, I mean, I guess what works for me, I can't say will work for everybody. In the beginning of going into this, like you see galleries and they're all, you know, they sell paintings for a ton of money. And everything but here's the thing with galleries it's, it's one or the other you put stuff in galleries but then i wouldn't be able to release smaller stuff outside depending on the gallery that you work with um so then i just started to instead of shooting for super expensive pieces like the murals are but the smaller stuff like i like the idea of my friends and family being able to afford it yeah. It also satiates the itch to constantly make things for me if I make some smaller stuff and put it within the price point of people. Um, 
how you get the buyers. I think you just kind of build your following and eventually you'll attract, you know, certain people to certain things. But I don't, I think I'm different because I jump around so much. So I'll sell some things to some people. I'll sell some things to other people. The people that buy the rose blocks or maybe might be different than the people that are buying the lighters. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. Just kind of, you know, I don't, a little bit yeah. of everything. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, can you talk us through like your painting process specifically? Like, uh, do you have any methods or techniques that you've picked up through your years of experience painting murals? Murals? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's all there's all sorts. Methods in how I pick it or how I paint it or both. In, any kind of thing. In, any, any kind okay. of thing that you have picked up that really, you find that it's really helpful. Okay. Um, well, I will travel to various cities and then usually get the wall there. Sometimes they send me a picture of the wall before. I kind of like to – I paint through phases. So I guess right now I'm in the flower phase. But I also like to paint something that's pretty site specific to the place um, just to maybe incorporate because I'm going to leave. But to incorporate the people that are going to stay there, I'm not really the artist. Like if I want to make a statement, I can make it with my inside work. Like you generally won't see me outside making political statements on massive walls just because I've what I've learned is that people like something beautiful. And it seems to lift up the community more than like going and bashing Trump. Yeah, you know, so I just kind of, I kind of like to play nice when I go paint, because I'll go paint in the Midwest, you know, so it's, you just, <laughs> you want to play nice when you travel to these places, but I'll get the wall, um, usually I'll paint something, yeah, that's specific, like an animal or a flowers, I just came from, well, in, Me in November, I was in Mexico, so I did a big mural of, like, the, a butterfly that's down there, and I like to just make it look appealing, obviously. So I just kind of like to print pretty things that people like, you know, yeah. so I can leave them with something when I go home. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, tips for that. You, you work, usually we work hand paint to spray paint. If I can fill it in, I mean, it depends on your budget. If I could fill it in with, with, um, bucket paint first, if it's a larger wall, I'll do that to save cost. Like I was in okay. Indiana and we had a, the wall was about 80 feet. And I used about nine gallons from a power from a power sprayer on it, which was thousands of dollars less than it would be with spray paint. Yeah. And faster. Um, yeah. And faster. So you learn, you know, tips and tricks like that. Yeah. I love it. So, yeah. Okay. So you, you mix spray paint and like latex acrylics, basically. You can mix spray paint. Well, well one of the layer, I guess. Yeah, the main, depending on how you layer, you can't put you can't put acrylic on oil. You can use like a house paint as a base, and then depending on the wall, one of my preferred brands is Montana. They have acrylic. Oh yeah. So you can paint you can paint acrylic on acrylic. So you could put water and water on water, and water on oil, water and water on water, oil on oil, and you can put oil on water, but you can't put water on oil. Okay, so got it. got it. So I can't paint an oil base with hand paint and then go over it in acrylic spray paint because it'll peel. Okay, well, what if I do like um, oil based spray paint and then I go over it with a, like a, a latex acrylic? Is that is that a no no? No, that won't work. I mean, it might fool. Like, oh no, it might, it might, it might. I mean, it depends. It might fool you to think it works, and then it might peel in. A while <laughs> yeah yeah or immediately so i just kind of <laughs> like to i just kind of like to stick to um the general rules of that good tip but i've but i've mixed and matched everything and had it fuck up and peel and everything so okay. i mean i get it's one of those things or sometimes you could force it and put a, a varnish over it and like call it a day i mean there's ways around it but generally no i would not put water on top of a uh, oil on top of water Good tip, you know, and it's funny because I knew that 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 saying you can't you can't put oil on top of water, and I just did a spray painted mural, and I like did um, 
little, little highlights with uh, acrylic latex on the top and didn't even think about it. So I'm just going to go down there tomorrow and make sure it's okay. <laughs> I mean, did they beat up while you were painting? No, it was, well, it, it was on cement. So like the, the, the spray, Might be all right. the spray really soaked in. And so, and I waited a day and it just did like little stuff on the top. So yeah, it might be all right, but it's actually really glad you reminded me of that. <laughs> I mean, you might be all right. If it's a porous surface like concrete, then you might be fine. For something I've learned the hard way, for something like, like if it's a sheet metal, it's not. It'll peel. Okay. It'll come right off. Yeah. But I mean, if, if you didn't see a problem with it, you might be fine. Okay. Well, let's hope. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Is there anything you don't like to paint without? Yeah. Uh, the little banana caps. They're my preferred choice of cap. Banana caps. Okay, fill me in. All right, universal cap. Universal. So these are my. These are my preferred. Um, but that that's because I paint kind of cross hatchy. I mean, I know people that blend, that are big on blending and fading and all that. They'll use soft stuff. But my preferred, perfect. Here's my preferred three caps. I use this one. Which is the banana cap or the universal cap? The, yeah, the universal. This is the stock cap for most Montana black uh, cans. Stock. Which is like my medium fill-in cap, I guess. And then if I'm really like throwing paint, this is the, the fat cap. Fat cap? So this, yeah, this will empty the can in like 10 seconds. Okay. 12 seconds. Really? So if, if, yeah, like if I'm really looking to fill stuff in i'm using this okay but i but i'm usually staying in this range right here okay where do you purchase these caps um by me i have a place called lowbrow um if i am traveling well i travel now with the bucket but like if i'm traveling somewhere and they're paying for paint or they're having it for me i ask to have these but I, if not i bring them regardless loop has a Loop uh, paint has a cap that's similar that I like, but those are about the only two that I like. Uh, and there's a ton of different caps, but that's a lot of people prefer these ones. Okay, so what like if if I were to order some online, where would it, where would I get those? Do you know? Spray Planet probably. Spray Planet, perfect. I'm I'm pretty new into the whole spray paint thing. I've, I've done like uh, latex acrylic murals a lot, and I'm like just finding um, that spray paint saves so much time yeah um you know what i use often and in the beginning i was like this kind of feels like cheating but now that i've like turned it a little bit and i use it in a bit of a different way transparents i mean they help me immensely because i'm not an old school like graffiti writer where i could do the shit that they could do with yeah. rust-oleum like i'm not that person so I came in the game with all the fancy tools. So now I know the fancy tools. So one of them is transparent. And it's basically like spray painting with a watercolor wash. But I mean, you could do some really great things with it. Often I sketch with it. I shade with it. You can do highlights with it. Like if I want to add a light highlight with a touch of transparent, as opposed to totally screwing it up and attempting yeah. to do it with white, because that happens often. Yeah. So in the beginning, I kind of use them as training wheels to get can control. Now I could go back and if I didn't have them, I can work without them, but I still love them. They're like, a, it's like a watered down wash. I am writing that down as well. Yeah, because I, I was just painting that, that mural and I was like, man, if I knew how to like do highlights with the spray can, I totally would because yeah, that white, it just goes on there and just covers everything. There's no like or highlight. Or even that whole mural behind you. You could have had that whole thing be in yellow and then just came along with one can of orange or one can of red and created all of that stuff yeah. with just one color yellow. Like if you, you could have painted the base yellow with hand paint and then yeah. come along with one can of transparent orange or red and done all of those highlights and everything and just tone it down. Ooh. It's amazing. Text me or DM me when you use it because it's really great. I definitely, definitely will. Thank you for that. <laughs> Okay. Um, are there any art lessons you've learned the hard way? Yeah. You got to put primer down first. <laughs> okay. And, and depending on things, but if you don't, if I've learned the hard way, I had to do a commission one time for, it was a curved piece of sheet metal and oh. I just went ahead and I painted on it and it was like in the beginning of spray painting. So I, there was probably like half an inch of spray paint on it. And then they wanted me to come back a couple years later. Well, I've now gotten better. 
to <laughs> to go paint and I had legit I took oven cleaner and a chisel and just hours of just sitting there to chip it off because I couldn't even at that point I couldn't even paint over it and then my father was like well yeah because you didn't use a primer <laughs> it was it was awful it was it took like four or five hours of just like arc a lot like just digging with a with a chisel to get this stuff off it was awful so i'll never do that again so prime your stuff if your surfaces if you intend on ever taking it off okay and and also just like maybe making it last longer too or um i mean this wasn't going anywhere okay so this being i mean this not being primed this stuff adhered to it like nobody's business so yeah. i mean it, spray paint all depends on on the elements like, even if you put a coating on them, if that stuff beats in the sun, like, eventually it'll all lighten up or come up. Some brands are just more saturated in pigment than others. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm, I'm loving your accent, by the way. It's so cool. <laughs> very... Why? Do you, think I, do you think I have a thick accent? It's, it's very, like, Brooklyn, basically. Oh. Sort of thing. It's yeah. cool. <laughs> I did, like, the Jersey Brooklyn, like, loop. So it's probably a mix of both yeah for sure <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite past project see when it comes to murals a lot of the time it's the full experience will be like because my friends will be there and we'll be traveling and it, it, so it's a whole it gets tied in instead of it just being walls mm. you know what I mean like instead like the, the last one I really liked that I did the I liked how it came out I liked the colors I did like blue morpho blood uh, butterflies in Guys, that's my dogs. I did blue morpho butterflies in um, Mexico, but I stole my dog from Mexico too. So I like that trip. <laughs> okay. That's another story. Um, and then, yeah, like this summer I travel around with a group of friends and we went to Indiana. We go to, so that was fun, but that's fun collectively because of everything, if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, any, any of it, like the, the job, the, the, the experience, the, the actual painting, any, any of it. Yeah, my pa my stature limitations on how long I like a painting is generally short. It's getting <laughs> it's getting long. It's getting better now that I'm I'm getting better, but it's still really short. Like I like a I I'll like something I paint. I mean, it could be days and I'll be over it, or <laughs> weeks, months. But I mean, there's not a lot. I don't know because I feel like everything is a progression, you know, a, and step from one thing to the next. So yeah. there's not a lot of work right now they got there's pieces that I've done that I like but not any that like you know are like a magnum opus like they're not like my my one and done like I feel like I'll be able to make better ones yeah for sure I, I think a lot of people can uh, resonate with that as well like yeah there are so many things that I'm like people are like oh I love that I'm like I did that in college like I, I shouldn't even have that up like why oh you it's don't even know my family loves to like hang up all the nonsense <laughs> that I made when I was younger and every time I'm like take it down my mother's like replace it but I'm like <laughs> you have like 15 pieces here I'm like I can't replace I'm like just get rid of it if it was up to me I would burn it but there's so many people are like you need to save this stuff but I don't there's if there's a limit like if it's the stuff I did when I was younger I'm okay with it now if it's the stuff I did in like that one year of college and whatever I'm not <laughs> far enough from it right now that I don't despise it so maybe in time when I get you know more disconnected from it I'll be okay but like there's a chunk of stuff that I won't even go near that that's so funny like I'll get angry if you show it to me because it's just <laughs> it's just too much yeah because there there is like a gap where like you, you can look at the stuff from your high school years and be like, oh, yeah, that, was a, that wasn't even me, you know? That was just when I started off. You can kind of laugh about it. But, like, things, like, a, just a couple years ago that you don't like, you're like, mm -mm, no, don't. <laughs> like, it's just, it's too much a part of you. No, none of it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. No, it might, it said I, yeah, it just skipped. No. <laughs> uh, so what are your future art plans and goals? What are you working right on right now? Do you have any mural projects coming up just waiting for us to be able to get out? Like, what's going yeah, on? I mean, I, I did, and then this happened, so yeah. I don't know. I have to do – there's a Hilton by me. I have to do a mural for them. Um, yeah, there was a couple There was a couple murals coming up in the summer because this is my traveling time, but, I mean, the idea of getting on an airplane right now or going to an airport is pretty distant. I'm lucky that if – like, I really get stir crazy. I can go paint around where I live. Um, like, I have a couple murals I can go cover up and just paint to go paint, which I probably will go do. 
But uh, as for mural jobs, everything obviously is on hold for right now. So I'm just keeping busy with like sculptures and inside stuff and smaller pieces. Yeah, for sure. So for, for these mural jobs, do you have like, like people like Hilton? Like how are you making the connection to get in with them? Do they reach out to you? Are you like, hey, I want to do something for you? How does that usually work? No, usually I'm lucky enough that you, it's word of mouth at this point. The Hilton, I was actually painting for a beer garden in Jersey City on the water. And the woman was on her smoke break. This was two years ago. She was on her smoke break and she said like, oh, give me your card or something. And so I said, okay, didn't think anything of it. And then she ended up hitting me up a couple months ago being like, hey, do you remember me? Like they're finally building that hotel. So I was like, okay, perfect. That's amazing. So there, there, there are a bunch of them are like that. There's not really one set way. Um, I don't really hit people up unless I want to do it just to do it. Like that's how I'll find outside murals or in the beginning, that's how I found outside murals. I would find a wall and then contact people. But now I'm lucky enough that people will contact me, see my work, think it's something that'll work for a certain thing. And then they'll hit me up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's amazing that you've, you've gotten to that point where work comes to you. It's, it's, and like in the, in the beginning, you're not really sure like where that turns, you know, like at first you're like, asking people to paint on walls like hey can I paint this for you can I do this and then at one point it just kind of twists and people are coming to you and it's just such a better feeling but I think you have to do that like Agreed. I think in the be like you have to like you can't just expect to show up like the wall that I would charge astronomically for is the same wall that I would go paint for free in my spare time you know what I mean so like you have to do it because you like to do it and then I think people see that and then they come to you. I also think I was lucky enough in the beginning to be stubborn that it's not that I only painted what I like to paint, but I painted what I knew would look good as opposed to them being like, paint me superheroes and anime and whatever. That's not my style. I can gear you towards someone or one of my friends gladly that does that, but you don't want me to do that. Right. I would tell them you don't want, I'm going to charge you a lot of money for something that you can get cheaper and better somewhere else. You want if you're hiring me, you want me to do what I do. And I am lucky enough at this point now that generally they let me, they, you know, they don't, they, they know my work ethic is hard though. Like no one's harder on me than myself. So it's not that I'm bullshitting them, but yeah, I'm, I'm lucky enough now that they, if you're hiring me, then you're hiring me because you like my work and you think it's going to add to something, not because you're trying to force me to do something that like, I'll do a collab or ideas. But yeah, if, yeah. You're, if you tell me, paint the American flag, it's just not something I'm going to do. One, it's not my thing. Two, I don't want to go down that road. Three, I can have someone else do it for you. Yeah, for so, sure. You know. I love that. I love how you're, you really stick to your guns in that. And I think people ask for what you put out, you know? And so if, if artists are out there putting out, you know, superheroes and American flags and all that, like people are just like, oh, she paints anything and I'm going to be asked for that, you know, which is actually a, a lot of what I'm asked for. People are like, can you do this? I'm like, sure, I'll try that. I'm not really at the point where I've found my really signature style niche yet like you, but I love your style. But in the beginning, but in the beginning, you have to do that. In yeah. the beginning, I was painting, I was painting on glass at a friggin' preschool, you know what I mean? Like for, I would just say yes to anything because yeah. it was like, I could, at least I'm getting paid to paint on this preschool as opposed to going to a job I hate right now, even though I hate what I'm painting and I'm not even putting my name on it. <laughs> you need that stuff to then eventually get to the point where you can say like, I don't, you know, I don't need to do this anymore, but you do. It's in the beginning, it's good to try a whole bunch of different stuff and be like, I suck at that. I suck doing that. Like, I'm good at this and you want me to do this. Like if I painted American flags, I could have a whole career because I live in Brooklyn. How many auto places or, you know, delis want a flag on the side, but I just can't I, for myself. I would go nuts. I can't get into that. I love it. Sticking to your guns with your niche. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So I have one more question here and then I will let you go. Uh, is okay. there any advice you would give artists who want to make art their full-time career, but just don't know where to start? We have a lot of podcast listeners and just followers in general that are just kind of in that tipping point of not really at full-time yet, but they want to be, but they're just like, where do I start with this? I mean, I, get, I think it's different for everybody. I think it's a combination of luck and talent and other stuff, but I really, the, the, 
cliche thing of like you have to have a passion for it i think you have to have like you have to want to do this whether you are getting paid to or not like morning noon and night because yeah you're gonna be painting preschool glass windows you know what i mean at a point and if you don't go home like and really are driven by this then i don't think it's gonna last i think if you do that then eventually it'll congeal what your path is what you like to do you know, others so eventually i think you'll kind of click into place. And then once you're in there, I think the name of the game is just trying to be better for yourself and not be bored with yourself. You know, like yeah. I could, I could paint American flags all day, but that doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. You know, like I'll go home and just be completely, you know, it won't do anything for like satiating that urge within me. So you think you just really have to find what you like and like, don't, I look at Instagram, it's great, but I feel like some people get consumed and like, oh, everybody's doing this, now I'm gonna go do this too. Like every, like even resin, I have a weird thing with resin because so many people use resin, but like, you'll see they, they kind of half ass it. Like if you're gonna do something, I think you should do it well and do it for yourself. And then things hopefully, you know, will fall into place. I love it. I, I think that's the tough love that everybody needs to hear. Honestly, you're like, just do it, do it right and suck it up yeah. and just, you know, yeah, like, it. I don't think you should half ass things like, yeah, all my art <laughs> sucked in the beginning too. Yeah. But like, I kept trying, like I didn't, you know, some of these people, they paint a mural in an hour and a half and it looks like they painted a mural in an hour and a half. You know what I mean? People can see that. So if I'm painting an hour and a half mural every day, it's like, okay, you're, you're, you have a lot of content, but there's no quality to it. I think if you put quality into it, like real will recognize real and then they will be drawn to it. That's so true. Real, real will recognize real. And people are going to ask you for what you're putting out anyway. If you're putting out half-assed stuff, that people are going to ask you for that level and, yeah. and that price point and expect that. However, if you're taking the time to put out amazing, amazing things, then people are going to ask for amazing and they're going to pay for it too because they're going to appreciate it. Yeah. No, eventually. I mean, it's tough. It's definitely tough. There's definitely a point where you're like sink or swim and you don't know if you're, you know, people are gonna. But if you stick to that uh, for me, if you stick to that long enough, eventually there will be a breakthrough and you can kind of, you know, you're the captain of your own ship and then you can call the shots. But you have to go through like the shitty years of making nonsense. Just so to true be able to deserve this now yeah I'm, I'm gonna quote that you have to go through the shitty years of making nonsense you, you have to embrace the suck <laughs> i have i have made some nonsense i promise you <laughs> me too yeah uh, i used to do a lot of dog portraits and just hated it and then finally i was like okay no more <laughs> like i just don't yeah. do it anymore but i did yeah. it for a while because like do, yeah. doing something is better than doing nothing a hundred percent and that's how i always used to look at it it's 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 better than me not doing it so whatever part of this brain that it's keeping active right now yeah dog portraits like yeah oh, everything even that that fucking awful job of of this daycare and then other daycares wanted it and painting on glass also meant when i had to turn it over i had to take it off so i was blatantly spray painting on glass and then using oven cleaner which i'm sure is <laughs> not the professional method to take it off so i was just making every and i make up a i made up a whole lot of things too but then eventually like uh, from a thousand mistakes, I started to learn something. So it was all right. Yeah. Ev everything turns out all right anyway. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Well, thank you so much. This is the mic drop point. I, I loved everything about especially this last part. I think it's so inspirational and just the, ah. the, the, the kick in the butt, ah. the, the, the kick in the butt that yeah. I think a lot of people need too. So ah, yeah, just thank keep you at that. it. Yeah. Thank you. It was very nice meeting you. Yeah, you too. I will keep in touch. Uh, this podcast will come out in a week from today, and I'll send you all the links and everything. So awesome. thanks again. I'll talk awesome. to you later. Awesome. When, and when you try oh. transparency, let me know how it goes. I will. I definitely will. <laughs> okay. I'll talk to you later. See ya. This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time six-figure art business. With weekly trainings that include step-by-step -step proven art business techniques, plus painting tutorials from yours truly, <laughs> and other guest artists who are masters in their field, you will be well-equipped to learn and grow into the highly skilled and highly profitable artist you know you're meant to be. 
I've figured out what it takes to build my own six-figure art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. It's not hard, but it does require your time and dedication. So if you're up for the challenge, go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. If you review our podcast and send a screenshot of that review to me on Instagram, I am at art by Andrea Earhart. I will then promote your art on my story and tag you as a little thank you for helping me grow this podcast and our Artist Academy community. I have a reach of over 50,000 on Instagram. So this is a little help me to help you incentive. Also, if you ever want your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just hop on over to facebook.com slash groups slash Artist Academy to check out the schedule every Tuesday to catch us on live. I'll see you next week.